Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to talk about how to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So specifically, if we're given some matrix A, we want to learn how to calculate both of these values. So in other words, let's take some matrix A, it's in the set of all n by n matrices, and then we're going to look at the set, lambda and x, where this is an eigenpair, so lambda is our eigenvalue, and x is the associated eigenvector. And so we start off by saying that these two values are an eigenpair if and only if they satisfy this equation. So if and only if they satisfy our eigenvalue equation. So a times the vector is equal to lambda times the vector. And once again, recall that this is for a non-zero x value. But last time we looked at that equation, we did a little bit of algebra on that equation. We were able to subtract the lambda x to the other side, factor out the x, and our result was this equation. And this is the equation we're really going to work with to actually calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And so what does this equation tell us? We've seen that given some specific eigenvalue, that we were looking for the non-trivial solutions to this homogeneous equation. So in the last video we said, what about lambda equals 2? And we plugged that thing in, and we looked at this homogeneous equation, and we did the row reduction, and we tried to see if there was non-trivial solutions. Because for this to be an eigenpair, for lambda to be an eigenvalue, there has to be non-zero x that actually satisfy this equation. But that, we did that given some eigenvalue. How do we find an eigenvalue in general if we don't have one first? So if we choose an eigenvalue such that this matrix a minus lambda i is invertible, what would that tell us about the system? Well, if it's invertible, then this homogeneous equation would have only one solution, and it would be the non-trivial solution. There, if we choose a lambda that makes this true, lambda cannot be an eigenvalue, because the only vector associated with it would be the zero vector. That means that what we need are lambdas where this matrix is not invertible. But a matrix is not invertible, when its determinant is equal to zero. Thus we need lambda such that the determinant of our matrix is equal to zero, because that would tell us the matrix is not invertible and there would be non-trivial solutions to that homogeneous equation. So this is the equation that is now just a function of lambda that we can actually solve for lambda and find the eigenvalues. For lambda. We saw that for our lambda to find our eigenvalues. And then for each specific eigenvalue that we find, we solve this equation, this homogeneous equation, for x to find the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue. Find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the specific matrix A equal to negative 4, negative 1, 6, 1. So we'll start by finding the eigenvalues. We are going to look at this determinant, A minus lambda i, and we're going to set this determinant equal to 0 and find out what values of lambda make it equal to 0. So let's do this calculation. a minus lambda i has the effect of subtracting lambdas on the diagonal. So we're really looking at the determinant of this thing. Now this is just a 2 by 2 matrix. So to calculate its determinant, we take this product. So negative 4 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus the other product. So that's minus a negative 6. Now I'm going to expand this out, so I'm going to do this multiplication, and I'm going to get negative 4, so I'll get plus 4 lambda and minus lambda, that should give me positive 3 lambda, and then lastly plus lambda squared, and all that is plus 6. So let's keep simplifying this, we have lambda squared plus 3 lambda plus 2. And we can also see that this factors nicely into lambda plus 2, and lambda plus 1. So the question, once again, was when is this determinant equal to 0? But we can see that that characteristic equation was really just a quadratic polynomial. And so we're really asking when is this equal to 0? And this is equal to 0 when lambda equals negative 1 and negative 2. So now we have our two eigenvalues. Now our next step is to take each one of these eigenvalues and find the associated eigenvector. So we're going to start with our first eigenvalue. So now our job is to solve the homogeneous equation a minus our first eigenvalue to find our first eigenvector. 
So we look at this matrix with, with our specific lambda 1 plugged in. We will get the matrix that looks like negative 4 minus a negative 1 minus 1, 6, and 1 minus a negative 1. So this is my matrix A with a specific lambda value subtracted on the diagonals. And once again, we're solving the homogeneous equation, so we can simply row reduce this matrix. Or if we want, we can augment with those zero values and solve it like this. So let's go through the solution. Negative 4 minus a negative 1 is negative 3. And then 1 minus a negative 1 is 2. And if we row reduce this, if I looked at row 2 plus 2 times row 1, that would just turn my second row into just a row of zeros. And I'll take that first row and multiply through by a negative just to clear those negative signs. So here I'm at this stage. Now I could further go into reduced row echelon form if I wanted to and multiply through that first row by a third, in which case I would get this. And now I want to write out my solutions. So I'm going to write this as my system of equations. This says x1 plus 1 third x2 equals 0. And x2 is my free variable. So I'm just going to say it's equal to x2. So what does that make my first eigenvector? Which just has components x1 and x2. Well, this way x1 equals a negative 1 third x2. And x2 is just a free variable. I'll factor out my x2. I'm looking at a vector of negative 1 third and 1. And so an eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue would be any multiple of the vector negative 1 third, 1. Now as I write my eigenpair, I will write that lambda 1 equals negative 1. And the eigenvector associated with that is going to be and now here, I'm not going to write that it's a multiple of this thing because I understand that eigenvectors are not going to be a unique values. There are going to be infinitely many eigenvectors. And so whatever value I put here, I will know that any multiple of that vector is also an eigenvector. So because I'm just going to write the vector, I'm going to choose a nice eigenvector. In other words, if I can choose any multiple of this, I'm going to choose a multiple where I don't have a fraction left in the vector. So what I'm going to do is say if x2 equals 3, then the result would be the vector negative 1, 3. And certainly that is in this set of all eigenvectors. So I will use this vector instead of my negative 1, 3rd, 1, just to clear the fractions. But understand that any multiple of this will also be a perfectly valid eigenvector associated with lambda 1. So that's my first eigenpair. Now we have to do all that again with my second eigenvalue. So now I'm going to solve a minus my second eigenvalue to find my second eigenvector. Now my second eigenvalue was lambda equals negative 2. And so when I plug that one into my matrix, I will get negative 4 minus a negative 2. Once again, we're going to augment this with zeros. And I'll get 1 minus a negative 2. So at this point, why don't you pause the video and see if you can finish up this problem to find the second eigenvector. Now that you've had a chance to work through this to find the second eigenvector, let's go through it. As we row reduce this, we will get negative 2, negative 1, 6, and 3, augmented with 0. My next row operation would be to take row 2 plus 3 times row 1. This would result in a row of all zeros. And I'll multiply that top row by a negative 1 to get this. And I'll multiply that top row by a negative 1 half to get 1, 1 half, and 0. From here, I'll write out my system of equations. It looks like I have x1 plus 1 half x2 equals 0. And x2, once again, is my free variable. Now, you should also note that when I started this problem, I really expected to get all zeros in my second row. I expected to at least have one column without any pivot positions because there have to be non-trivial solutions for this homogeneous equation. So I expect to have free variables. So now that I've written all my system equations, I can write out what my vector actually is. In this case, my x1 value will be equal to negative 1 half x2, as I were to solve that first equation for x1. And x2, once again, is just free. So this looks like any multiple times negative 1 half and 1. 
So as I write that second eigenpair, when lambda 2 is equal to negative 2, my eigenvector being, once again, I'm going to choose a pretty eigenvector out of the set of all eigenvectors. If x2 happens to be equal to 2, the resulting eigenvector would be negative 1, 2. So that's a nicer looking eigenvector than negative 1 half 1. So this would be my second eigenpair. So I have this eigenpair and this eigenpair. I find all, found all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for my matrix A. Now let's take a quick look at a little bit harder problem. Find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for this matrix A. Now this is a 3 by 3 matrix, so it's a bigger problem to work with. So let's at least get this problem started. Once again, to start, I need to find my eigenvalues by looking at the characteristic equation. I want to find out when this determinant is equal to 0. So first, let's calculate what that determinant actually is. If I write out this determinant, it will be the following. So recall, once again, this is just my matrix A with lambda subtracted on the diagonal. Now, to actually calculate this determinant, there are lots of ways I could do it, but I think the easiest way in this case would be to expand along that third row. So I have positive, negative, and positive signs as those signs for the coefficients of my determinant expansion. And the reason I'm expanding on this third row is because that will, as I expand that, it'll be 0 times some subdeterminant, minus 0 times some subdeterminant. So those terms really go away right away. I can ignore them. Plus 1 minus lambda, plus the subdeterminant that I get when I eliminate that row and column. I'll be left with just this. And then because that's just a 2 by 2, I can actually calculate that value. This would be 1 minus lambda times 7 minus lambda, negative 3 minus lambda, minus a negative 16. All right, from here, I'm going to expand this out. And I'm going to add in my 16 and see if I can simplify all that. So here, I will get negative 21. And then I will have minus 7 lambda and plus 3 lambda. So that should leave with minus 4 lambda, plus lambda squared, and plus 16. I will clean this up a little bit to be lambda squared minus 4 lambda minus 5. Now, of course, I could expand this 1 minus lambda, but why? If I expand that, I'll just end up with a cubic polynomial, a third degree polynomial, which in general are hard to factor to find the roots. In this case, this factor is already factored out. So I already know that one of the roots is lambda equals 1. So I wouldn't expand this. Rather, I would leave this out and just factor my quadratic. Now, in this case, it looks like I can see what that quadratic value is. I can see this should factor into lambda minus 5, lambda plus 1. But in general, if I couldn't, I could always go back and use that quadratic formula. I could always write out for this piece, lambda is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where the coefficient here is a, the coefficient here is b, and the coefficient here is c. So once again, recall, if you can't see that factorization, use that quadratic formula. In this case, I was able to. And so now my question of when is this determinant equal to 0 is answered when I look at when this cubic polynomial is equal to 0. And that's true when lambda equals 1, or lambda equals 5, or when lambda equals negative 1. So these are my eigenvalues. All right, so now I need to take one of these specific lambda values and find the associated eigenvectors. So I'm going to grab lambda equals 1. Up here, I have a visualization of what that a minus lambda i is. So if I just look at that thing, plug in lambda equals 1 for my eigenvalues, looks like the result would be 7 minus 1, which is 6. Then I have the rest of that row. Negative 3 minus 1, which would be negative 4. And lastly, I have 1 minus 1, which would be 0. And so I'm really going to row reduce this to find my solutions. So there's lots of ways to go through this row reduction. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to divide row 2 by 4 and actually swap my first two rows 
and making my first row here 1, negative 1, 1, 0. Remember, there's lots of ways to do this. In this case, I am just swapping row 1 and row 2 and dividing this row by 4. My next row operation is going to take R2 minus 6 times R1. And when I do that, I will get a 0 here. I will get negative 4 minus 6 times negative 1. That will leave me with positive 2. And then I will have negative 6 minus 6 times negative 6 minus 6 times 1 should give me negative 12. And a last row of zeros. I'll divide row 2 by 2 to get 1, negative 6, 0. And last, I'm going to take row 1 plus row 2. And now I'm in RREF. And now I can write out my equations for the system. So I'll get x1 minus 5x3 equals 0. I'll get x2 minus 6x3 equals 0. And x3 looks like it's my free variable. When I write out my vector solutions for this eigenvalue, it looks like I will have positive 5x3, positive 6x3, and it's my free variable of x3. So my solutions look like any constant times the vector 5, 6, 1. So this would be my eigenvector associated with my eigenvalue. So it looks like my first eigenpair would be lambda equals 1 and the eigenvector of 5, 6, 1. And once again, if you were working this on your own and you came up with a different vector for your eigenvector, it still could very well be correct because any multiple of this eigenvector is also an eigenvector. And now we just finish up the problem by going to those other two eigenvalues and finding their associated eigenvectors. So I strongly encourage you to do that. And as always, I strongly encourage you to check your solutions by looking at your calculator or a software like Mathematica to help calculate those eigenvalues and eigenvectors as well. All right, this includes some examples of how to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And that concludes this video. Thank you.